So I'm just trying to, I, I teach education, right? I'm trying to create, sorry. I'm trying to create educational activities so that we can discern based on what you're talking about. I don't know, I don't know that I've got these right yet. But it seems to me, and I don't know that I, I wasn't writing down your, your categories, right? But it would be useful, and the, right after lunch we're gonna go into some ideas for yourselves, right? So mm -hmm. to think about, okay, so what are the tributaries for myself, my own experience? What are the tributaries for my faith and my church experience? What are, what are the tributaries for my context and my life experience? You know, to name some of those in terms of um, experiences, good and bad, assets, timing, calling, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And how does that converge into some kind of a ministry plan of some sort, right? Yeah, even a small, I'll give you a simple example of this. My previous church, uh, there was um, a woman who had been a local coach, she was a biology teacher. And she loved like plant taxonomy, like as a bio person, and geocaching. And so she decided one day, hey, Matt, why don't we just take the kids? She loved being around kids, a coach and an educator. Why don't we take them on a geocaching trip and we'll kind of frame it as a God theology walk. And I'll teach them all about the different flora and fauna of northern central California. And that, those walks were the coolest thing. I mean, it wasn't some full fangled ministry thing. There were these informal things we did once every come. I don't know anyone else that did anything like that. And the kids learned a little bit about geocaching and everything else, but it was that those tributaries were their education, right? They already have, were into a geocaching network. Uh, they've been around students. All these things kind of came together, totally. It's, it's multiple systems. Yeah, I have a model that looks like this. I've never put it down anywhere. Um, I'm trying to think of the author, Beekner. Isn't it very Beekner? He says, like, uh, where the, your, your greatest longing meets the world's greatest need is where I do ministry, but I added into that sort of like another level, um, kind of like context discernment basically. I could find it in somewhere. Yeah, well, we won't part ways. Whoops, what did I just say? It's all right, it's a chart, don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, um, this one's messier, because I was trying to map on the, the discernment tool that I have turned to again and again, is it's kind of your categories, why me, why here, why now, right? Why am I the one called to this for all of these reasons, right? Why is this the place to do this? Because for whatever reason, you know, because maybe I have the gifts but not to use here for this, right? Or why now? Why is this something that I'm so compelled by but is now the moment to do this? Or am I, you know, I, I did this with somebody who was, you know, eight months pregnant. She was like, okay, this is a great idea. I feel called to it. I think this is the right idea for this ministry. It is not the season. It is not my season to do this. And so it got put on the back burner for a little while. And that became a percolation kind of process. Anyway, so those three questions, I was trying to figure out how to put self-context, self well, it should be world, anyway, context, and faith in there. But you get the idea. I mean, you've got, yours is more complex in terms of how we think about this, but I, I need to have a handle I can carry around, you know. So why me, why here, why now is like this daily kind of um, discernment tool. Um, well, and that's smart. The energy and the juice, I think when we talk about the repentance as a positive turning, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think it's so worth paying attention. I've, I've told Ken a couple of times, at some point early on, I went into a local nursery uh, selling plants and I had brochures about Mo just Motown, that's all it was then. And it turned out the guy behind the counter was a person of faith and was absolutely fascinated by the whole thing. And he said, yeah, bring me some cards, but bring me brochures too. We'll put them on all the counters in here. Mm -hmm. And I walked out, I remember walking out of the nursery and I was like so excited. And I felt like I wanted to jump up and down on the way to my car. And I was like, why? Why do I feel this way? And I couldn't remember being that excited about a particular idea or attempt in youth ministry for a while. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know why, and it took me a while to sort all that out, but I knew it was worth paying attention to. Um, and, and that's why I say at the center of that is when you have one of those moments where like something about this lines up right, I can feel it in my bones with who I am and who God's called me to be in some joy, or the community, oh, the community could use that. I might not even be good at it, but the community could use it. Pay attention to it. 
that intersection, that intersection or, or cross section of rivers coming together matters. Um, and I think it's a sign that God's telling us it matters if we can pay attention to it. So 